You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Today's show is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a live coaching session with somebody who won that session on Instagram where we did a contest. I am starting to use Instagram now, learning it finally, and I've been giving a lot of real estate updates there. So if you want to find me, it's Kathy Fetke. Yep, just my name, Kathy Fetke. And you'll know it's me because there's a little blue check mark, which normally was reserved for celebrities and famous people. But I think nowadays you can just pay for it if you can <laughs> identify yourself. So we finally got the check mark, but I'm still super proud of it. At least you'll know it's me and not a fake of me trying to ask you for money for, I don't know, crypto or something. I think that happens a lot. So look for the blue check mark, Kathy Fedke. I give lots of updates there and contests. And that's what we did. And Courtney Clark won that contest and she got a free coaching session with me. Our marketing team thought, well, that would be fun to do the coaching session live on the Real Wealth Show. I thought that's, wow, a big ask because it's a very vulnerable thing. I might make her cry. I don't know. I've done that before, uh, but she did agree to do it. So that's what we're doing today on The Real Wealth Show, a live coaching session with Courtney Clark. So Courtney, welcome to The Real Wealth Show. It's so great to see you here. It's such an honor to be here. I was really grateful to have won this because you're someone I really look up to and admire. So it's just such a privilege to be here. Really excited for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. I'm I'm thrilled too. So normally in a coaching session, I would have sent you a questionnaire and find out, you know, what you want to focus on, but let's do it now. What's what's the main thing you want to focus on in our session, our live broadcast coaching call? <laughs> you know, I would say one of the things in our real estate portfolio that we are currently experiencing, and me especially, so my husband and I have a real estate portfolio here in um, all of our stuff is in Utah. And we've recently had a couple of lows in the market. So we had two flips that we had spent a lot of time on and more time than what we typically spent. We actually ran into some, some contractor issues. And I, and I want to, I want to say this, it might sound like we're making excuses and I want to be mindful that if I am, I want to stop doing that. So that's, that's the first thing. Love that. But what has happened and what, what has kind of been born in us from having such big blows is a different fear than we're used to. So back when we got into investing in real estate, I was always the supportive spouse. Um, not always initially, but that's been my role. And then as we've, as we've grown this business, um, I definitely took more of an interest and I was definitely more involved in that real estate world with my husband. And what's been interesting now is we've experienced these two really big losses and where I feel like right now I'm being held back is I'm allowing fear to kind of creep in and get in the way. And I don't, I just don't love that because <laughs> I do believe that this is a, this path is something that it's time in the market, not timing the market. And unfortunately this was just bad timing, but I don't, if you look at our portfolio in general, it looks really strong and healthy and we've made really, really good choices. And we've had a lot of wins, but these two losses, for some reason, they just feel like some shackles kind of got put on my, on my wrists, on my hand, you know, on my feet, whatever you want to say, where I just feel a little bit more cautious. And I, I really would love to dive into that coming back hmm. from such big losses. Yeah. Uh, on these flips, are you in the flipping business? Really good question. So flipping for us has always been a vehicle to ultimately buying and holding. So my husband is a real estate agent here in Salt Lake City, and I actually own a home staging franchise company. So when we got into flipping, it was purely out of necessity. We started flipping so that we could generate enough money to then go purchase a property. And that vehicle has worked beautifully for us. What happened at this particular time, it was kind of like the perfect storm. We had a really long-term relationship with a contractor that was doing all of our flips. 
In fact, in 2019 and in 2020 was the years we did the most flips of all time. It started to slow down for us a little bit in 2021. And the reason why is because we were making, we had made such good money that then we were able to purchase the properties that we wanted and our portfolio looked really great. And so we were like, you know, maybe we're not going to do as much flipping. Also, what was happening at the same time is our um, contractor was considering moving to Las Vegas. So we started slowing down, but what we didn't do was completely stop. So we had these two properties that we purchased thinking he was still going to be involved in those. What ultimately ended up happening, he did end up moving to Las Vegas. We needed to find a whole new contractor crew and where we're at those relationships. And I think this is in general, right? Those relationships with those contractors are just so vital because you get into a groove, you know, pricing, they know you, they know what you like, what you don't like, who you like to use, who you don't like to use. So we had a really beautiful system and we were really successful having this relationship with this particular contractor. Unfortunately, he moved and we found new contractors. It took a lot longer to do the flips. We ran into a little bit more headache. Um, I feel because of some of those delays, ultimately then by the time we got these properties completely done and put out there, the interest rates had completely shifted mm -hmm. and we were sitting in a very different market. I can look back and I can see areas that we could have planned for. We probably should have been a lot more like cracking the whip, but ultimately we have flipped in order to buy rental properties to buy and hold. So you don't kind of fix these properties up in order to keep them. You, you have two different models, one's a flip and then a different type of property for buy and hold. Yeah. Occasionally there's been a few properties and actually properties out of necessity that have turned into the buy and hold. They weren't necessarily planning to be a buy and hold. It just happened to be something that we chose to hold on to. Um, but primarily if we flip a property, it's for profit to go towards purchasing um, a better deal for us to hold on to. So if you were to, you know, your first question was, how do I deal with the fear that I'm feeling now? If you were to imagine that fear being, a sh having a shape, you know, whether it's an animal or, a, you know, or a person or something, wh what do you see? That is such a cool question. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like that because what's coming to mind, <laughs> it kind of feels like an elephant. It feels really big, but mm -hmm. it doesn't. But when I really think about it, it's more that it just felt, it just feels big, but it doesn't feel scary. Like when I'm standing at a zoo by elephants, I'm not afraid of them charging at me. And they're actually like, <laughs> they kind of seem more of like a gentle creature, but they're just really big. Yeah. Wise, very wise. Mm -hmm. Great memories. So if this elephant could talk, what would it be telling you right now? That's a really great question. It would be telling me, and you know what? It's funny. Okay. I think there's a reason the elephant's coming to mind. Have you heard that, that quote, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. <laughs> The elephant's like, oh, dang, you're going to bite, you're going to eat me now. <laughs> I think, I think if the elephant were to talk about and say, Hey, this was a series of, I'm really not that scary. Basically. It just feels really big right now. Cause it, it was a, it was a significant loss, but it's not, it doesn't define us. It doesn't define what we've been able to create and what we've generated over time. And you really solve these problems one bite at a time. Like you move forward one step at a time. I think that's what it would say. And can you see those steps, what the next step might be? Yeah. You know, one thing we've actually talked about is we don't want this to stop us from making movements and moving forward. And I want to share this little piece with you because I think it'll kind of give some more context. So when we got into investing in real estate, I was the really apprehensive one. And I was the one that had a hundred page question survey that my husband, Jordy had to fill out before we would agree to do any investing, any property, any flipping, anything like that. So he would go through 
this series of drill sergeant Courtney of questions. <laughs> and then if he passed the test, he we could move forward with the property. I was so in fear of losing everything we had created. And I wasn't allowing myself, I wasn't allowing my mind to open up to see the possibilities that us taking a risk and taking a chance, what that could bring. And that truly, these actually were pretty calculated risks. They were calculated steps. They were not flighty and they weren't just, um, they weren't chaotic. It was calculated. Honestly, it really was. And that real estate was a lot more stable than I was giving it credit for that doing these processes was pretty proven. There's a lot of good successful, um, outcomes that we've seen in other people's lives. And so I'm, we, we overcame those hurdles. And then eventually we got to a place that we weren't having conversations around, Hey, this seems like a good idea. This seems like a great deal. We were just totally comfortable. We knew it worked. We would, we were having really expansive conversations. I took the opportunity to grow my knowledge on understanding how investing works to a certain degree. It's something I'm still not as savvy as my husband, but I'm always working to improve that area. And so, you know, thinking about this situation, one thing we've agreed to do is we don't, we want to keep taking steps forward. We don't want to just all of a sudden then say, close up shop, let's not do it again. One of the first steps that we're choosing to do is to go back a little bit more to the basics. Mm. This particular flip, um, while we've done similar before, this was a much different flip, huge undertaking. A lot more was involved than just the typical able to go in there, clean it up really well, make sure that it's sound, make sure that it's clean, make sure that the vents are, you know, clean of any debris or any other, you know, harmful things, fresh coat of paint, nice carpet, good, just, just sound, right? Really just make it something. And that's our first step that we're currently doing. I guess my fear around that is when we start to go back into that world of, you know, observing a property, I don't want to run back to that version of myself that wants to answer a hundred questions out of fear. Mm. I want to be able to take those steps and just say, no, we've got this. We're like, that doesn't define us. And I, and I, I still want to be that supportive spouse for this part of our business. Oh, wow. That's, there's a lot there. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, do you think it's possible for you to be the old version of you? No, I really don't. You're just not her anymore. Are you? No. Yeah. I but think there's too much wisdom. Yeah. Much experiences that have proven otherwise. Yeah. You have too, too much of a track record. I love that. <laughs> I really love that. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I'm sure she's, she's popping up, but if, if, if the old version of you had, had something to say to you today, what would she say? <laughs> oh. If she were, oh. if that old version, I feel like that old version would be so proud of where I'm at now mm. and would celebrate me getting out of my own way, out of our future's way. Um, because knowing what I know now, it's been such a beautiful journey and it really has come with so many highs. And, and, you know, something that I'm trying to remind myself too, is that with this loss, we've, we've experienced so much good. My husband likes to say, so he didn't, he didn't, um, finish college and I never even attended. And so he likes to say that basically this is like, he got his MBA. Yes. <laughs> we paid for our MBA. And so it, it's that, it's that learning experience. And I guess it's just keeping that higher state of mind and not letting this define us, not, not letting this. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a direction here, not letting this be something that someone says, man, you really guess you just didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> right. Cause isn't there some pressure when people look up to you in your field that you just, you probably shouldn't experience losses. 
there might be some of that, honestly, the more I'm, more I'm diving into this conversation with you, the more I'm like, no, I'm not actually not so scared about completely around failing. Maybe it's, maybe that fear is we have been those experts in this field for so long, but this is a big loss. Well, it does that, do we lose credit? Mm. Do we get yeah, credibility? Did we lose a level of respect? Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> do I know what you mean? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I don't know if you know, I'm on, uh, on the market, a bigger pockets on the market show and with three other, you know, real estate experts. And our last show was on just our recent losses. And Jamil talked about losing a million dollars last month. Wow. A million dollars and I'll take my loss back now. <laughs> <laughs> so does it happen, you know, to everyone, of course, and it usually happens in when trying something a little different than your normal, you know, so it sounds like this was a little bit of a different flip than yeah. you were used to. Yeah. And how do you come back from that experiencing a loss and, and being around your peers and being around and showing up in that world still as the expert, still as someone that people are trusting what you say? Well, I will let your future self answer that. So your 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 you, gosh, I sound like a, some kind of therapist here, but this is what this is the way Rich and I play all the time. But your your future ten year from now self, like picture her, what what's she like? I love this question because I'm currently going through an exercise with um, creating like a vivid vision for myself, mm. and I love always visiting who my future self is and and getting to know her so that she can continue to emerge. So your question was, what is my future self like? Yeah, let's say 10 years from now, who's she? She's very honest. She is vulnerable. She shares her wisdom very openly because truly she just wants to help people succeed. She's kind and she's, She's really successful. She loves what she's doing. She's thriving in the different pillars of her life with her family and her business and her friendships. And she's vulnerable about her trials and her struggles because that attracts the people who are meant to be in her world. And because of that, they're able to grow together and stronger and she's able to be more relatable. So I would say that's another thing. She's really relatable. People get her, people feel like they can talk to her about anything and they're seen by her because she's not afraid to be real with you and tell you that I've been there and I know what it's like to struggle that way. And I know what it's like to lose $90,000 on a deal and come back in the ring, ready for more, ready to do things differently. That's what she'd say about this situation. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you look at it from a different perspective, you know, the fact that you could lose $90,000 and just be like, eh, that's okay. I'll, I'll make 90,000 on the next one or whatever. I mean, yeah. that's a big amount of money, right? Yeah. That's, that's more money than some people make in a year than a lot of people make in a year. Uh, but for you to be able to just say, oh, that was one deal or two deal, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, that was one. What? Oh, that was on one. <laughs> okay. What, you know, what, what would it take for you to kind of make that money back? How, how long do you think it would take for you? You know, what's so funny. I, okay. You're asking the best questions, Kathy. This is why you're so good at what you do. This is why you are just so amazing. Oh, thank you. So, okay. I've always been, people have laughed at me for this, like not, and not in a rude way, like just shaking their heads, like the way that I think, but my higher self, I'm not going to, I don't know if I would say my future self, my higher self typically looks at these types of transaction wins and lo and losses. Even when we have transactions that are really successful, you know, really successful transactions, I've never let myself get so attached and hung up with that number 
because in my mind, I just, I, I want to be in abundance. I want to just be thinking that was awesome. And what's next and what, and, and, and it doesn't mean I'm not grateful and not um, happy and content with what, with what I've been given or what I've earned, but I've really been good at not attaching to those numbers and those wins. And I've been grateful for them, but just not attaching, if that makes sense. So when I'm thinking about how my highest self thinking in these numbers, that's been something that has shown up is it's really not that much money. It feels like a lot because we've never experienced a loss of that magnitude, but we've experienced wins higher than that. So I'm giving it more power than I really have to. I'm giving it more meaning than I, than I should be because I wasn't giving my wins the same amount of meaning that I'm giving the loss. I really wasn't. I wasn't valuing our wins so astronomical because I know there's always more and it was exciting. But for some reason, I've been given this, giving this loss so much clout and I've been putting yeah. it on a pedestal and I've been just shining this giant light on it and <laughs> focusing on it so much that I really need to pull that away because to make that again and to figure out how to come back from that, it really isn't going to take a whole lot more work right now yeah. in our market. It's probably going to be a couple flips. Yeah. Me back and that'll put us whole. And then you'll have some great stories to tell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that that's so beautiful. I mean, that, that would be a great takeaway is to find a way to celebrate those wins, you know, whether it's writing them down. Do you, do you have any sort of system for acknowledging your wins and celebrating them? I feel like I want to say, yes, I do. But to really tell you what I do, I don't have an answer. I know one. So one thing that my husband and I do frequently is where we continually go through our portfolio and we talk about it and we examine it and we, we have a yearly, um, we call it a, we go on like a little retreat, if you will. And it's a vision casting. And so we really get very clear with each other of how we, we go through the previous year, the wins, the losses, the highs, the lows, and then we set goals and intentions and plans for what we want to accomplish that next year. And in that time, this, this, um, weekend, we, we really indulge, we, you know, have really nice meals and we treat ourselves and we just enjoy that time. And we really talk and focus on all the positive where the mindset that what you focus on expands and so if we sat there for, you know, the whole 24 hours and focused on all the negative, that's just going to expand. We choose to focus on all of the blessings, all the abundance, all the wins. And while yes, we do take note to some of the things that just didn't work or things we don't want to repeat again, we really heavily focus on what did work and what's working. And then we go into the new year with that energy, with that mindset, and it gives us the time to celebrate that are really, really big wins. I would say, yeah, you know, we, you know, we take some time for ourselves, but I love that prompt. And that gives me such like such great homework because I don't think I actually have a system for celebrating the wins. Ooh, that sounds like really fun homework. That yeah. Really fun homework. <laughs> Whether it's like a collage that you make and you hang up or, or, a, you know, I've seen couples share diaries and they, I they love that. you know, something where they're constantly reminded um, and it's, it's common, trust me, this is a conversation that Rich and I have a lot too, is, is it's easy to focus on the negative. Yeah. Um, the way I just in reframing everything you said, um, you're at another level now you're at a, <clears throat> a professional level of real estate where people do come to you for advice. They look up to you and anyone who's in the professional leagues of anything, they're, they're going to make mistakes, right? They, they're going to, you know, to, not every basketball player makes, makes the basket, right? Of course not. And, and, uh, and that's just part of the game, especially when you're at that professional level, because the stakes are higher, mm -hmm. right? The stakes are a little bit higher. Um, but they're really kind of at the, in the end, it's like the goal is to make more shots than, you know, than not right. Yeah. <laughs> but just knowing there's going to be some shots that don't make it, but it's the ones that do make it the count right? That's the ones you count. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I appreciate that so much. That truly does help. 
I appreciate the reframe on that because you're right. I mean, I love going to professionals who can share with me their, their wins as well as their lessons. And that's one thing I'm actually trying to reframe my thought around this as it's a lesson. And again, I didn't mm -hmm. realize until this conversation that I think a lot of that fear has been more based on, I don't want to lose that credibility for us. We've worked so hard. I don't want to yes. trust with people that, um, you know, we don't entirely know what we're doing. And I certainly am not a person who likes making excuses. And wouldn't it be amazing if it only brought you more credibility? Yes. Yes because of the way you handle it and learn again, we're just coming back to Jamil a few weeks later, he started, he launched a new project and they made like 2 million the first weekend or something. So it was like, all right, no one's feeling sorry for you anymore. I need to go back <laughs> so to yeah, that episode. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, when you're playing in the professional leagues, it's, it's higher stakes, but you also have so much, um, ability after all the years of work to pull yourself back up more than if you were just starting out. So awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, Courtney, it has been such a pleasure to have you here. Um, any, anything you want to just leave with any big takeaways or next steps? You know, honestly, I think that I'm undervaluing the power of talking, having <laughs> I have really incredible people in my life. So I'm not, I am not short, like my list of people I could pick up the phone and have this conversation with. I'm really blessed to say it's, it's quite a hand. It's, it's a lot of people. However, I haven't had this conversation with anyone. I haven't expressed what I'm dealing with. And here I'm jumping on this call with you, totally thinking, Hey, I want to just get past this fear. I don't want it to happen again. And as we were talking, I'm realizing it has nothing to do with the fear of failing again. It has everything to do with, I hope I didn't lose something. And how do we come mm -hmm. back from that? How can we show up in our community and still be people that are, that I feel worthy that we're able to serve others and we're able to help others and we're able to guide others. And so first and foremost, my, my biggest takeaway is that I really need to utilize my community better and pick up the phone and have these conversations with things I'm struggling with. I'm grateful for this conversation. I'm grateful for the, the powerful questions you asked me, even the one that had me laughing of like, if this were an animal, what would it look, <laughs> which animal would it be an elephant? I guess <laughs> um, I just think that was so powerful. And so I just appreciate so much your mentor mentorship and your ability to make it light and your ability to help me see that I am in a different league and that's okay. And this is exciting and I can choose to reframe that. So thank you. That's, one of my biggest takeaways is that I should have had this conversation sooner because I probably would have realized what it was holding me back. And then of course, from this call, you've really just helped me see things in such a different light. I really appreciate it. You have no idea how much this helps. Oh, I'm so glad. And you are just such a pleasure to, to be talking to because you're so self-aware. You're, you've obviously done a lot of work on your, your state of mind and, and your personal growth. It shows up. So it was really, really fun. And I will say, I just love that you reached out to me on Instagram and, uh, when, you know, I've been in park city a lot skiing and he just reached out and we ended up having dinner together. And that was really fun. I, I love that you did that too. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was so nervous, but I, I have to tell you, I also thought well, she's a human and I'm a human and people like to, to hang out with each other. And what's the worst she could say is no. So it's kind of funny. Like that fear wasn't even an issue for me. I mean, it was just like, well, she could just be polite and say, oh, I'm so sorry. I have plans. I'm busy. No, thank you. But I appreciate the offer. <laughs> Crazy lady who decided to randomly DM me, but instead <laughs> took me up on the offer and we had such an enjoyable time with you. Oh, it was really fun. It was really fun. And of course, we're establishing, you know, our friends in that part of the world too. So it was, it was great that you reached out. All right. Well, thank you so much for being vulnerable enough to have the conversation you didn't have on the Real Wealth Show, where only a few, I don't know, tens of thousands of people are listening. So <laughs> very brave. All right. Well, Courtney, thanks again. I'm so glad you were the one that won the coaching. This was so fun. Appreciate it so much. 
And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show for some fun live coaching. We are actually doing masterminds and retreats now. If you just go to realwealth.com forward slash masterminds, we'll have some, some more retreats and masterminds coming up in the future. I'll let you know about it there. All right. Thanks again for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.